Hello everyone and welcome to Prof Talks. In today's presentation, we'll have a look at the 483 observations that were issued to the Biocon Malaysia facility. Inspection was conducted in July 2023. It is a sterile formulation facility and 8483 observations have been awarded. This is the redacted copy of the 483 observation report. So the inspection was conducted from 10th July 2023 to 20th July 2023 constituting 9 working days. There were four investigators, Eileen Liu, Patty, Daniel Lahar, and Rong Gu. This is a 10-page report and consists of 8483 observations. Before moving ahead, please ensure that you have subscribed to the channel Prof Talks and have pressed the bell icon so that you can receive the notification of the upcoming presentations. First observation is, procedures designed to prevent microbiological contamination of drug products are not established, returned or followed. So there are three sub-observations and clearly the FDA have stated initially that this is a repeat observation which has also been notified before to the organization. So uh, during the inspection of the post-assembly area of some uh, uh, sterile operations, the inspectors noted that aseptic operators blocked HEPA unidirectional airflow when they were placing stoppers and sleeves onto the respective Respective containers. Sterile scissors used to cut open the bags containing sterile components was held into nine sterile holders when not in use. Some section that was exposed, uh, the core section that was exposed to the grade B area, it, uh, when it was returned to the grade A area, there was not proper sanitization or sterilization. The inner surfaces of grade A rabs sectioning off from the grade B side were not sanitized after the performing the interventions. The aseptic operator stood inside the grade A area while cleaning the inner surfaces of the rabs after the intervention. The SOP, uh, the respective SOP lacks the details on how to clean the rabs and the amount of uh, whatever cleaning agent that was used is insufficient uh, and that was not clearly specified. Second sub-observation stated that the they watched the airflow visualization studies and noted that the HEPA unidirectional airflow was blocked during replenishment of stoppers and seals. Aseptic operators head, shoulders and arm were seen inside the grade A area. Aseptic operators head, upper chest, shoulders and arms were again seen inside the grade A area. The cleaning of the wraps after some specific interventions was not simulated. Again. There was example of uh, some sanitization during interventions were not simulated to assess the risk and demonstration of sanitization was different from the routine practice. The third sub observation is related to the uh, probably pre integrity testing. It is a redacted detail. So we have to consider whether it can be due to the RABS uh, glove integrity pre integrity testing or the filter pre integrity testing. The observation states that according to the production manager and deputy manager, the firm does not conduct the integrity testing to ensure that there are no microscopic defects like pinholes, tears, which can be visibly seen during aseptic operations, right? So at least different batches were manufactured since January 2023 where integrity testing was was not performed therefore there is no sterility assurance of adequate for use of prior to or start of aseptic production. Second 483 observation is failure to thoroughly review the failure of a batch or any of its component to meet the specification. So there is one sub observation under it. So on 20th of March 2020 the firm record, uh, recorded an out of trend result for a drug substance patch. They placed that drug substance patch onto stability study. Later, they released the batch and manufactured uh, a DP batch using that drug substance batch and dispatched it to the US market. Right? Uh, later, the drug substance batch failed in the six month long term stability study. However, the firm failed to test the retention samples or place additional DP batches on stability after discovering the failure. The stability failure investigation concluded that there is no impact onto the uh, final product and no biological product deviation report was submitted to the US FDA, which was accepted by the firm's sponsor as well. However, the investigation lacked adequate scientific justification for allowing all impacted batches to remain in the US market until expiry. The third 483 observation is failure to thoroughly review any unexplained discrepancy. So there are two sub observations under it. Assigned root cause for laboratory OOS was not always scientifically justified. The firm initiated an OOS in the assay results for potency of some injection in the stability samples for two month long term and two month accelerated stability study. Investigation concluded as an analyst error involving pipetting dilution error. The investigation did not contain the confirming information because the conclusion was not supported by phase one investigation. Hypothesis 
hypothesis analysis was performed which was also an OS. Phase 2 manufacturing investigation was not carried out. A composite sample was tested. The results were within acceptance limit and the original OS results were invalidated. So this was a common filling batch which was used for filing of two US batches also. So if that initial OS results was not invalidated, the results would have been extended and the quality impact would have been considered onto the two US batches also. The example under the third 483 states that OS result was observed in the assay in the stability study at two month time period. The phase one investigation noticed an increase in the area response. However, no hypothesis testing was performed. The investigation concluded that OS result was attributed due to instrument breakdown. However, this instrument malfunction was not substantiated by the service provider and also by the fact that the system suitability and standards were within the specification. The phase two manufacturing investigation was also not not conducted. The observed OS results were invalidated and the batches were sent for distribution. Right. The other example stated that an impurity OS was observed in the DS in the in-process batch and uh, it was with reference to the relative retention time. The phase one investigation did not identify any laboratory error. The remeasurement of the original sample concluded that OS was due to instrument malfunction. However, this remeasurement activity was not conducted uh, with approval of QA or QC. Based on the outcome of remeasurement, the test was performed uh, and was meeting the acceptance criteria. The original OS results were invalidated. Next example is OS in TOC. So there was OS in the TOC results. However, uh, the root cause that was identified was not scientifically justified. So uh, it was from the sampling point from which uh, the samples were collected and found to have a higher specification of TOC. It was determined that uh, there was some disinfectant solution which was used and which was attributed at the root cause uh, due to this TOC. However, there is no evidence to support and justify that uh, the disinfectant residue was attributable for this higher TOC count. Observation under the uh, 483 number 3 is deviation investigations regarding post. It can be glove integrity failures or the filter integrity failures are inadequate. Specifically, the deviation investigation regarding the post, uh, we can consider it as filter for example. So the uh, post filter integrity failures found after completion of aseptic batches are inadequate because you fail to take into account that you did not perform the integrity testing. So as we have seen in the previous observation also in this 483 that the integrity testing was pre-integrity testing was not performed. So there is no way to determine whether integrity leaks were found during the integrity testing performed and whether their filters were uh, we are considering filters as examples, so whether the filters were uh, integral during the manufacturing uh, operations. So a number of examples have been given where uh, there was uh, post integrity failure noted. However, it was not determined uh, as pre integrity testing is not carried out. So when this failure occurred. 483 states failure to have return procedures to describe kappa during loss of differential pressure for the classified area. So this is specifically with reference to that there is no return procedure on what corrective and preventive action has to be taken when there is a loss of differential pressure into the uh, aseptic uh, operations area. So a number of deviation examples have been given where there is a loss of differential pressure. However, the procedure does not describe on what action need to be taken in such cases. There was a study conducted to establish differential pressure assertion specific limit. However, it was inadequate because it was conducted and rest and it did not consider the aseptic filling operations time period. The fifth 483 is failure to establish and document accuracy, sensitivity, reproducibility of test method. So there are two observations. The firm uses some stoppers for product contact containers and closures. So this observation is specifically with reference to the method validation and method transfer. The method for testing of the stoppers was validated at the Biocon Bangalore site and was transferred to Biocon Malaysia. However, the method transfer activity was not performed. So uh, there is no assurance that the receiving laboratory has the procedural and technical ability to perform Perform, uh, the transfer method as intended. The firm did not perform the routine some test to qualify incoming lot of the stoppers. So they relied on to the information provided by the supplier COA. However, the supplier COA also does not contain that specific particular information. 483 observation is very important with reference to the CGMP training and the refresher CGMP training. So this point is specifically with reference to the lack of refresher CGMP training for the process research and development personnel. 
please consider this point as to be very important because as per ICHQ 10 the CGMP aspects go back to the R&D level as well and this observation clearly states that initially at the time of induction a CGMP training is provided to the R&D personnel however when they are later inducted and uh, introduced into the routine working a ref refresher GMP training which is provided to the production personnel such kind of training is not provided to the R&D personnel. The seventh point is with reference to the risk analysis so a specific risk analysis report was studied uh, for the injection and it does not address the control of injection force onto the finished product. So each lot were released into the market however there were no design inputs on output related to the injection force that has to be applied right. So uh, it was also noted that injection force on finished products was not conducted uh, for any of the release lots into the US market. There has been a numerous complaint where uh, that no product could be administered however the consideration for the injection force was not given. 483 observation is with reference to the documentation of the corrective and preventive action. So a CAPA was established against the complaint for the uh, injection force onto the uh, injections that were available. The CAPA, uh, with this CAPA the complaint samples uh, present were tested for friction force. However, the retention samples of these complaint lots were not tested. The CAPA is currently still open in investigation and which is facing in issues globally. With this, we come to the end of this presentation. Hope you have liked this presentation. Kindly subscribe to the channel Prof Talks to get more information onto the pharmaceutical quality system. Thank you.